our very interesting next problem is Netflix movie recommendations. Um, as you might already be aware of what Netflix is, Netflix is one of the very interesting companies uh, which where you can you can actually browse videos. They actually stream full full length movies. They also stream lots of uh, TV series and things like that. I believe Netflix just recently launched in India and it's uh, rec by recent time and maybe a year ago or so and it's been a terrific success here. So for those of you who may not know what Netflix is, you might already know or you might be aware of something called Amazon Prime Video, which is basically a music or sorry, which is actually a, a video streaming service that Amazon provides to all of its prime customers. So on this site, as soon as I log in, of course, uh, the, I've logged in as myself, right? Based on the previous videos that I've watched, they want uh, Netflix wants to predict other things that I might be interested in. For example, if you look at this tab, right, it says topics for Varma, right? It no, it 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 guessed using using all of my uh, all of my Netflix viewing behavior. It realized that I might like the new movie Outlander or some some something about Saudi Arabia or Spartacus or Rain Royals. Of course, by from this you know that I now I love history. So there's also something about the British Royals and things like that. And how did it recognize this? There are multiple ways to do it. One of the interesting ways is uh, is is what uh, is what we will pursue in this. So the data we have is about four hundred eighty thousand users. So for four hundred thousand eight uh, for four hundred eighty thousand users or four lakh eighty thousand users, we have ratings for just over seventeen thousand movies. Right. Of course, no single user can watch seventeen thousand movies. So for each user I and a movie J, right? We have a rating R I J that the user I gave on movie J, right? Of course, a user might watch 10 or maybe 20 movies, right? So we have all these ratings. Using these ratings, we want to suggest the user UI what other movies that he might like. For example, let's assume I have user one, right? Who likes uh, or who gave movie one, movie two, and movie three five star rating, which means he really loves it. Let's assume I have a other user U2 who loves movie 2, movie 3 and movie 5. Let's assume I have another user, let's call him U3, who loves movie 1, movie 3 and movie 5. Now here is an interesting pattern if you have noticed. So one interesting pattern here is this movie 1, movie 2, uh, sorry, this movie 2, movie 3 occur here, right? This pairs movie 1, movie 3 occur here. Because user 2 and user 3 have roughly similar taste as U1 and he, since user 1 hasn't yet watched movie 5, there's a very high chance that if I recommend movie 5 to user 1, he would like it, right? Because these users, user 2 and user 3 are very similar to user 1 in tastes because user 2 loves movie 2 and movie 3, that user 1 also loves. User 3 likes movie 1 and movie 3, that user 1 likes. Now, given the fact that both user 1 and user 3 like movie 5, there's a very high chance that user 1 also could like it, right? That's how we do recommendation. Of course, by the way, this was a very, very fantastic challenge on the internet. There is something called a $1 million prize a few years ago, where actually Netflix gave this whole data set and they they showcased their algorithm that, that they were using at Netflix on in production. And they said, anybody who can improve our algorithm better or who can make our algorithm better by 10%, we will give them a million dollars. This was one of the most interesting challenges on the internet uh, related to AI. And there was a phenomenal team after working almost for two to three years, they broke the 10% barrier and they won the million dollars. And uh, even the million dollars might seem large, the more important contribution is, as part of this problem, a lot of very, very interesting techniques called matrix factorization and very, very interesting ideas came up on how to solve, uh, how to solve competitions like this, right? So using this massive amount of data, uh, of course, these, uh, by the way, these movies range from anywhere from 1890 to 2005. So there's a huge spectrum of movies out here uh, for which the users have rated. So this is so this is super duper useful. And applications of this can be found everywhere. Just like movie recommendations, companies like Amazon and Walmart on their websites do product recommendations. Right? So where they could say, okay, since you like product A, there is a very high chance that you might like product B, C, or D. These are called product recommendations. Very similar set of algorithms are used. Of course, movies, there, there, is, there are subtle differences on Netflix problem and uh, uh, Amazon's problem. But if you're working in retail or music streaming, again, similar things are also used in music recommendations. 
uh, I'm sure YouTube YouTube will be using at least some some type of data like this when when they recommend new songs for you when you're when you when you're on YouTube listening to a few songs. So wherever you have massive amount of content that users cannot simply discover, and whenever you want to recommend customers uh, either videos or music or products, uh, recommendation systems or problems like this come into play. And this is this is a very very exciting problem. Of course, the data set is also fairly large, but it's fun to solve with, and uh, and and we will see. And this has huge applications all across the internet, not just for movie recommendations, but also for song recommendations, product recommendations, etc.